Well, I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't handle them. Uh, I was uh, always in some kind, there was always in the background uh, a nervousness of sorts, especially in the very beginning when I was young and I had to play in front of my friends. A part of me was very, you know, open and fun and, yeah, come on, let's play, you know. But when it would come time to do a gig, and especially through the Zappa years, uh, I didn't, I didn't know how to cope with it, you know, because, uh, well, the best way to cope with it is to be extremely prepared. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, if I ever have a reoccurring nightmare, it's of approaching a stage and not being prepared. And it actually is a recurring nightmare. It's like the only one I ever had. It only happens once a year. But I'm getting on stage with Frank, and I haven't been on stage with him in 40 years, and he says, okay, black page, ready? And I'm like, ah! <laughs> But as far as dealing with him, eventually, uh, your best bet is to be as prepared as you can. Uh, but it, it's a psychological gymnastics when it comes to nerves, you know? And one of the things that I discovered that's extremely helpful is, uh, is to just be present. You know, ju just because everything is actually an easy step. You know, you get, you get on an airplane, you get, you get up, you get off, you're waiting backstage with your guitar. I mean, it's, everything we do is actually very easy with the psychological baggage that we attach to it. That's when the nerves come in. So I discovered that uh, the best defense against that is uh, to just be as present as I can. Like if I'm, if I'm getting ready to go on stage and I'm washing my hands, my full attention is in washing my hands. You know, it's not in what are they gonna think of me? What happens if the string breaks? What if they don't like it? What if, you know, all this stuff. And it's, it was practice. But eventually the, the nerves, the nervousness it it turned into like an excitement. So like when I walk out now, I'm like, okay, baby, bring it on, bring it on, game on, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yes. Um, when I started out, I think the nerves would always get the better of me because I, I always felt like I, I never showed people what I could really do because I was too nervous. And like Steve said, you know, projecting into the future, what if I hit the wrong note? What if I don't play the song the right way? Um, so you gotta be present. You have to be prepared. So there's no uh, there's no substitute for just hard work, going over and over and over. So you know you can rely on all those minutes, hours, days of practice. You know for whatever it might be. Now there are two things though that will come up. Sometimes we do things alone. You know, like in front of eighty thousand people playing the national anthem. That's that's gonna, you're gonna be nervous for that one. Because <laughs> uh, everybody knows how the song goes. <laughs> it's, it's not like, oh, he's gonna improvise now. It's like, no, they never know how um, And, uh, but the other, the benefit of being with a band is that you can rely on everybody else. You're part of a team. And it's just like a team sport. It's not just about you. It's, it's working with the team. So. That is a kind of a strength I think I rely on. You, uh, as Steve said, you plug into the present. You walk out, you just be present, and it just so happens that you've got this band with you, and they're all feeling the same way, they all want to connect. And that helps you along. It's like just riding the perfect wave. You're not the wave. You know, you join in. You know, that's the way to look at it. But you gotta be prepared. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes? First of all, great honor to be here. Thank you guys. I've heard so many eloquent and articulate interviews from both of you on YouTube, so I want to ask a question that I haven't heard before. Okay. I'm a car guy. What would be your favorite car if you were going to buy a car to drive? <laughs> oh. I'm not a car guy. <laughs> I know a lot of car guys. I, I'm, uh, I'm not a motorcycle guy either. When I was young, we used to build motorbikes. Uh, we used to take apart lawnmowers, you know, scour the neighborhood for some parent who wanted to sell their old Tecumseh, you know, 12 horsepower engine. We'd take the thing apart and somehow get it on our bicycle and 
and immediately get into some tragic accident. <laughs> this went on for a good number of years until the accidents got really bad, and then and the grease and everything. And after a while, I was like, okay, I, you know, I'm a drummer turning into a guitar player. I can't be doing this, you know. So I got away from that. And my friends got into cars, and then. Fast forward many years, I wind up playing with this guy, Sammy Hagar, and he is totally nuts about cars. And, you know, when we go to his place, we go to rehearse, we don't rehearse that much, but eventually you have to go into the warehouse and check out all his new cars. And we're talking about cars that are worth millions of dollars. And so it's, you know, it, I, it doesn't do anything to me for some reason. What I want is a car that doesn't break down. How about that? <laughs> you know, I see smog checks every year. I mean, you know, just when you get used to a car, it breaks down, they don't make the parts anymore, and, you know. So that's, yeah, my dream car, they haven't made it yet. It should be able to fly, first of all. Yeah. Yes. Anywhere. If I just want to go to 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee or something, I want to fly there. Uh, but I don't know. Steve's, you're into kind of, you're kind of a car guy. Well, I'm more of a motorcycle guy. Uh, I, I like nice cars, but uh, I've only had one car uh, for the past, since 1986. A little uh, Datsun 300ZX Turbo. Yeah. And I re it's, it's not just a regular car. I mean, I've, I've rebuilt it twice. I had to buy other similar cars for the parts. You know, but I really don't drive it. I always used to feel that my favorite car would be one that, you know, uh, I didn't have to think about it, didn't have to worry about. It would always be there. I'd be able to get in it. It would take me wherever I wanted to safely and uh, uh, offer me uh, an opportunity to relax and just, you know. So I would say that my favorite car is Uber. <laughs> it's great. It's like I always used to think, I, one day when I'm rich and famous, I want a chauffeur. Because I like driving, but I don't want to drive. I want to sit and, you know, just read or look or play with, you know. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> where I live, I hit the Uber, and it's just great. I don't have to do anything. Don't have to park. Don't have to, it's nothing. Uh, oh, I was a Harley guy. Yeah, yeah. And my friend is a car collector. I mean, this guy has about $500 million worth of cars. Yeah. And, I, and he has this one car that's worth $100 million. Well, he turned down $80 million for it. You know, <laughs> and it's, that's enough for me to go over to his garage and just oogle these absolute cherries. whole ocean of exotic cars. Uh, so he, he dwarfs Jay Leno's collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I'm more of a motorcycle guy. And I don't even, I, I don't have any motorcycles right now. Because I'm just on tour, you know, and I, and plus, after a while, you, you know, you get, you just want to be, you don't want to do risky things. Yes, back there. Part of what makes you guys stand out is 